Welcome back to the report card. Surprise, motherfucker. Dolo and Mingo. Yo, that's my man. Yeah, man. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Get your popcorn ready. Because I'm going to burn this motherfucker down. Take that, take that, take that. Take it to the stage. Yo. What's up, people? What's going on, y'all? This is the Report Car episode 32. Yep, yep. I'm your host, Dane Diddy. And your co-host, Solo Yomingo. Yeah, man, we got four albums for y'all today. We got that Chinks Drugs, just going by Chinks now. Legends Never Die. Right. We got that A Boogie With A Hoodie uh, artist. We got that Mac Miller, The Divine Feminine. And then we got that Usher Hard To Love. Right. But before we get in there, how you been so long, Mingo? <laughs> <laughs> that liquor, man. Pause. <laughs> yeah, but we we, we we were sipping before we started recording. That's, you know. But yeah, regular, regular, you know, same old, same old. Uh, dealing with the family, life, um, and listening to these reviews. Uh, saddened again by the fact that we back on the news because, um, you know, it's like every couple weeks it just picks up again where they're killing us on the news again or we making the news because individuals are dying the police are killing people man well to be honest with you the police kill somebody black every 28 hours so just because you ain't hearing about it don't mean it ain't happening it you know rest in peace to uh terrence crutcher tulsa oklahoma man he was shot because he called to get his car checked out his car broke down in the middle that, of the that's road. That's what actually happened. Like, when I first heard the story, I just heard that he was on the side of the road uh, trying to work on his car because his car had stalled. Yeah, he called, he called the cops for help, and that's the help he got. It's crazy. You know what's the funny thing? This is what, one, one of my moves, actually, so I'm, I'm giving you one of my moves. Whenever you want the cops not to pay your attention, throw your hazards on and drive slow. Like you need, like there's something wrong with your car. They, but now they, his car broke completely down. No, no, I get and you. And then it was in the middle. Right. It was in the middle of the highway. Right. So it wasn't like it wasn't like, you know, people can just drive by if you was in the in the in the left lane. Right. He was like in the middle. It's crazy. And uh supposedly they claiming that he was reaching into his car even though his and windows you know was this, up. Man it's, it's always some story, man. It's just stop. Find and a different way. This, I seen man? we seen videos. And then, you know, I I, I blame us for even kind of eating up the bs and even touching the subject the minute someone fixes their mouth to tell you an excuse or reason it's when the conversation stops because how many videos we've seen of uh, an, uh other people in other countries or other people of other skin color uh um you know, with a weapon in their hand or whatever even swinging at Yo, police the dude or that, attacking that set police the bombs in new york Homeboy that set the bombs off in New York in the trash cans, he shot two cops, and they still took him alive. See what I'm saying? It's just, it's just crazy, man. It's, it's, it's definitely what a lot of people are saying, like Killer Mike and others, that there's an agenda to kill us. Like they just out. You know what I'm saying? To, I guess. Dr- dr- I don't know population control. I don't know what 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 is the what is the uh what what it come man. I'm gonna have to show you this video when we done. But there's this video that I saw a long time ago, and it talks about like how white people felt like they've been so scared of like us trying to get them back for slavery for so long, like they're on the edge of their seat just waiting. And it's just like we ain't forget it. But we ain't thinking about it like y'all think we thinking about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We just want to live our life. I mean, it's been like that forever. Whatever. What, like, you know, like, I don't know if, y'all, if I tagged you or we seen that cartoon or you probably seen that, that cartoon video where the whole breakdown, how they brought you here, whatever, whatever. And we still conform, conform and we, we pick up this Bible and we're like, all right, you accept us now? Nah, I don't do that. No, no, I'm just saying this is what the cartoon was saying. Like, you pick up the Bible, you you, you accept us now? Oh, nah. Y'all oh, do no, this. No, that, no, that was like, from Hidden Colors. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, so it's like they always find a reason. So it don't matter. It just, we, we, we 
have conformed. We have tried to find a way to stay to ourselves. And it's or more so the women than the men. Because the women straighten their hair. You know, and, and the thing is, it's like, I saw a video. I got I to take the mic off the scent. I saw a video over the weekend, and, and it was so real. It was like, when we go to work, we ain't even acting like ourselves. Like no, we you're putting, acting like the person they're on the paying facade, you to act like. We putting on the <laughs> facade to, to fit in. Right. To make them feel comfortable. Right. But that's not who we really are. But you know what I noticed also? They're also doing the same thing. You think because, so? Yeah. They come to work and try to carry this clean character. And it's not always like that. We're all humans, regardless of our credit score, regardless of our skin color, or regardless how much money we got in the bank. Shit, you could be a fuck nigga and be the whitest nigga with the 780 score. I don't care. You could still be a fuck nigga. You know what I'm saying? And and you could be the best, one of the best person, one, uh, one of the best people in the world. And you could be any color, any complexion, any, you know what I'm saying, race or belief or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's all a game, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on my Dick Gregory shit. It's just, it's just all a game. And uh, rest in peace to uh, Keith Lamont Scott in uh, North Carolina. Shout out to everybody in North Carolina that's out there in the middle of the night. I'm, I'm, I'm with you and mentally there. Uh, I will say that I'm not for the protests. I don't feel like that works. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, the only thing these people respect is their money. And if, if you hurt their money... They'll actually listen to you. Right. We have to actually make economical changes. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got to do things that <clears throat> hurt their pockets or hurt their investments. And not even just them. It's just to make, bring light to the situation. Like, even what what, what Kaepernick is doing. Well, he, just, uh, look, look at it like this. Say every football, every black football player decided to sit out a game. How much... How many games can be played in the in NFL? Right. Not one. Right. There is not 53 white people on not one team in the NFL. All right. So so if they decided to sit out one game, and I'm not trying to put it all on them. Right. I'm just using it as an example. If, if the NBA decided that all black athletes was going to sit out one game, how many games will be played in the NBA? Will it be 16 games played? But no, but we already know that there's things behind that they will find a way to Yeah, you got rookies that's just now getting paid and everything like that. Right. They, they ain't trying to miss I understand. Right. And and that's why it's bigger than that. Before you before you this is where I'm at with it. They got us when they got us to merge early, when they got us all to merge in all these sports because we had our black of everything, you know what I'm saying? And then we we merged. I, I I see where you're going, but yeah, I'm with they you. They got us. They got us because they 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 knew business. Not saying they were smarter than us, but systematically they knew the business better than us. And they found a way to game plan it. Like, all right, we're gonna merge with them because they got the talent. You know what I'm saying? And they and we wanted to be. We we looked at it like anything they had, we want to have too. We, so that way, we it wanted to like in, in in sense get down with Apple. Because Apple got the big crowd. So in sense, we wanted to get with them because they got a yeah, big crowd. Everybody wanted to leave title and get with Apple. Right. Exactly. So in sense, we wanted we wanted the, the broadcasting. We wanted to get seen. We don't want our, our games to just be in a back gym somewhere that you barely get tapes and anything like that. We Look at Dr. J. The minute he got a chance, an opportunity, he went to, you know what I'm saying? He switched over because you want to succeed. You want to be bigger. So they use those things. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, I think we should smarten up and back backpedal. Because we got the talent. Like, how much people going to tune in to the NFL, the NBA, or I don't want to say the major leagues. Well, even the major leagues, because minorities run that. It's nah, a white man's sport, nah. but yeah, it's really. a white man's sport or pastime sport, whatever. But my people, Dominicans, run that. We, we, we. We farm, we we birth those. It's like a factory. That's nothing. Cubans, facts. You know what I'm saying? Cubans, Puerto Ricans. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mexicans play uh, baseball now. It's like, you can't teach that. 
So it's like if we backpedal a little bit, we could maybe make some changes because they got us by the neck on certain things. You know what I'm saying? Even acting. Like, shout out to Dame Dash, man. He got his own studios. You know what I'm saying? Word. So it's just, I think we got we to gotta backpedal a little bit. And now that we understand business more and better, let, now let's do business. Let's backpedal a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And let, let's get our business straight. Definitely. But uh, yeah, man, rest in peace to Terrence Crutcher and, and rest in peace to Keith Lamont Scott. Like I said, I don't think the protest is working. You got to hurt their pockets. That's what they feeling. Um, on another note, you know, how well, do you feel about... B- before we change subjects, my fault. Uh, rest in peace to um, um, to um, Bill, Nun- Bill Nunn. That was Radio Raheem. On, um, he just passed away. I seen Spike Lee posted that. So. Yeah, shout out to him too, man. Word, man. Rest in peace and all that. Yeah, um, how do you feel about this Meek and Game thing? The Meek and Game thing, man. Um, it, it happened it, like right after we went live. Right, right. It's looking like it, it's looking like it's gonna stay on record. It's looking like it's gonna stay on wax, which is dope. I, I like it. Like my man uh, Nell says, shout out to him. He check us out week to week. Um, he said that um, this is dope for hip hop because it's like the NBA. Everybody's a little too friendly. Right. You know, so this dope for hip hop. Everybody don't gotta be everybody's friend. I'm not saying you gotta shoot them when you see them, but everybody don't gotta be everybody's friend. You could go at somebody. You know what I'm saying? You could go at somebody's neck. On a, on the track, you feel somebody did some corny speak on it, like. But as long as it's bars, you know what I'm saying, it's cool. It was the key word that you said was as long as it's bars, right? Like Drag On came in uh, game two. Yeah, cause uh, game kind of took a stab at him. I, I didn't really catch. It. I had to go back and listen. I'm not listen. I, I don't know. I have to listen to the 93 bars again. <laughs> I haven't, and I, I don't know if I'm going to. I do know. I think Game's response was better, but uh, I'm not taking sides. I like both artists. I like Game. I like Meek. I like both artists as well, so uh, I just want to see some competitive. But but as far as the song so that we didn't get so far, I think Game's was better. Right. I agree. I agree. That- but, you know, Meek takes the takes a little uh, at fault the fact that uh, he, he comes from a cloth where even if his man's don't rap, his man wants to ride, so we gonna let him ride. You know what I'm saying? So, in reality, O'Malley shouldn't have been on those songs. Nah. But it, but it's like I, I, I think what they come, was trying to do was uh, they was embodying the uh, hit 'em up philosophy where Pac had like the outlaws dissing Biggie and Junior Mafia. Right, right, right. Cause they, cause these cats come from like sharing Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. You know what I'm saying? So that that's the that's the thing in their head is like you fighting, I'm fighting. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I, I think. But uh, in reality, O'Malley shouldn't have been on the track. Um, it should have just been um, Meek. But Meek did hold it down. That's actually, aside from the War Pain, I think it was. War Pain was hard. Right. Aside from that, this is probably one of the hardest uh, Meek uh, replies he, he's had so far. Yeah. I think I think that's all. I think that's really all that's been going on, right? Um, R.P. Shorty Low, man. That was uh, yeah. R.P. Shorty Low. Right, right. Condolences, um, condolences to his family and the I think whole, we talked uh, the about, whole West Side, the Bankhead. I, th- I think we talked about Kanye and Cuddy last week. Yeah, we touched on that. Uh, I ain't really got much to say. Kanye kind of apologized on his last tour. Yeah, that was crazy. I, I was wondering what what played out. I mean, yeah. Kanye kind of been on some trying to be positive thing where. He ain't trying to beef with nobody or whatever. Um, and trying to, like, look at things that's happened, I guess, as, like, his life, his jokes, something to laugh at, something to cry at and just move on. You know what I'm saying? Because from the video, how he put Ray J in there and all that, like, it it probably was for controversy. It probably wasn't. It probably is to show, like, how he doesn't even care. You know what I'm saying? I think he did it just because Ray J really has been there for some pretty monumental points in hip hop so you gotta kinda include Ray J right but man you ready to get into it yeah man we can go right into it alright Chinks legends never die real name is Lionel Pickens he was born and raised in uh, Far Rockaway Queens New York he started rapping for fun at the lunchroom table in junior high and started taking it serious in the ninth grade 
Uh, he would take his money from selling drugs and use it for studio time. And he was trying to find his sound. He got his name from Chinks. Uh, he got the name Chinks because he smoked a lot of weed and people would call him Chinks because his eyes was uh, really chinky. And right, uh, the right. dr- <laughs> you know the drug part is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, he would uh, he would he he would f- uh, end up in a group with uh, some close friends, Stack Bundle and a couple other people, the Riot Squad. Right. And, uh, R-R-I-S. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was set. Uh, he would end up having a setback. He would go to jail from 2005 to 2008. Right. While he was in jail, Stack Bundles he uh, actually started forming relationships with Max B, Jim Jones, French Montana. You know, and when Chinks got out. He uh, put out a couple mixtapes, started creating a, a pretty good buzz, and he started getting some pretty high-profile guest appearances. And uh, as he was gaining some momentum and a lot of buzz, he uh, started getting ready for his album, Welcome to JFK. And uh, his and the next thing you know, his friends found him shot in the car in uh, Brerwood, Queens, New York. Chinks was only 31 years old. Legends Never Die is his second album. But this is actually his 17th project. How you feel about Legends Never Die, man? Man, rest in peace, Chinks. Rest in peace, Stack Bundles, man. <laughs> Stack Bundles, my guy, man. Stack Bundles was it. He had it, man. Um, but um, Stack Bundles, he yeah, he really did, though. Right, man. Voice, style, hook, game, lyrics, everything, man. Uh, energy, man. Shit crazy, cause um this this whole shit is it, like you you could it's a movie. Like somebody should seriously like do some documentary work on this because it, they they in Queens, right? Rockaway Riot Squad doing their thing, stack kinda gets on um to to Des, Desert a storm or whatever, and um Chinks gets knocked. Then um Chinks comes home, uh Stack is dead. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Crazy. So then Chink gets on through relations, ends up like it's just the whole all the relations. Like Max was with French, Chinks was with Stack. Now Chinks ends up with French, Stack ends up dead, and Max in jail. Like crazy. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole thing. But if you guys don't know Max B, Stack Bundles. Uh, you know, responsible for a lot of sound in New York or whatever, you know. Uh, uh, Especially Max. Yeah, you know, um, a whole lot of swag that's still going on nowadays. Um, but yeah, man, um, Chinks, man, uh, th- this this project was almost the exact same s- sound throughout the whole project, but I loved it because, um, you know, it was him. Um, it, he's he's lyrical. He, he's, he's lyrical. Um... I like the production. Harry Fraud uh, did his thing. Um, either Chinks or French hook game and beat selection is on point because I'm not gonna say uh, they're the most lyric lyrical, but definitely not. But they sound they make a good song. They know how to make a good sound. You know, um, French French is good with the hooks. Uh, Chinks showed that on this project also. Um, I want to give credit to Chinks being around Stack because Stack was a beast with the hooks. You know, uh, Meet Sims did his thing on every feature on this joint. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I love the right uh, the Riot Squad track with uh, Bino, Core Two Gs, and Stack. Man, um, that was that was that was classic, man. Uh, we haven't heard that since like mixtape days. So that that as a fan, that that hit home. You know what I'm saying I felt that. So. Um, I found it a little hard because I find it hard listening to um to artists that I fuck with and they recently passed or something like that. You know and I'm saying like when I was younger and big, a Pac died or whatever. You know, you were younger, so it's, the whole process is you don't understand it yet. But as you older and now I'm like like certain songs that I it's certain rhymes that I don't even want to hear really coming out his mouth like because he's dead. You know what I'm saying like. You know what I'm saying it's crazy, but um, like it was very well put together. Um, what else? Man, legends never die. Man, that was, that also comes from a uh, Stack Mundo mixtape. He named it the same thing. Um, I gave it a B at 88. I thought it was fire, but um, that might be biased because I'm such a fan from the whole movement, not just Tinks. You know I'm saying the whole everything that surrounds him, Stack, French, Max. I'm saying that whole thing is just 
You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it was it was a movement in hip hop that it's sad to be said we lost some dudes we, whether it was their lives or jail or whatever you know what I'm saying yeah that you you done yeah alright um I give it 82 a C plus um I think it's solid uh I don't wanna really knock it too much but I will say Chinks he has an okay flow but he has a lot of style right I think he has he sounds like a variation of French but uh, for some reason, I gravitate to Chinks more than French. I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, you know, it sucks that he passed away before he started hitting his mainstream strides. Right. But uh, I don't really know how this album came together. I, I tried to Google and look it up. Like, I don't know. But it sounds like it's some older verses and stuff like that thrown together. Um, most of the production is handled by uh, Blinky Blaze. It's got some other producers, but mainly Blinky Blaze. Blinky Blaze, some Harry Frauds, Young Stokes. Yeah, but uh, for what it, for what it is, it's not bad. It's a pretty good postpartum album. Most of the time, postpartum albums are horrible, you know. But this one actually sounds pretty good. Right. The feature work is pretty good. Chrisette Michelle, like right. we said, Meet Sims, Movado, French Stacks, rest in peace, to Stacks. Uh, Remo the Hitmaker, some Ride Squad members, a couple of them on, on there too. Uh, nothing here is too crazy to me, but most of the songs sound pretty cool and they're pretty consistent. Right. And uh, it's not a real huge. I'm not a real huge fan of the flow of the album. Like I wish they would have rearranged it a little bit different. Uh, some stands out. Some standout songs I liked. Uh, like this. Uh, Hold up. All good. And uh, what the fuck they on? Like that's probably my favorite joint. Um. I really wish the the vibe of the CD would have just been a little bit different, but I know he wasn't here. Right. You know that that's the thing that sucks because it's like he wasn't here for it, so I don't like really want to knock his him too much for that. His work is there, but he wasn't able to arrange it how he wanted to, or put it out how he wanted to, or push it how he wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it's just something about that. I, I don't know, man. But shout out to French man for making that happen, man. Um, you yeah, know. man. But. You know that that could have easily been a situation where uh, we never even hear another Chinks project again, but it's music and somebody's computer. You know what I'm saying, yeah, uh, absolutely. Whatever. Yeah, uh, but yeah, shout out to French man. One of his, one of my favorite moments to him was him and Wale on back to uh, no, nah, not nah, back to balling. Excuse me, that's French. But uh, tell me when to go. Okay, it's Wale and, and and Chinks and them dudes, them two dudes go in on that joint, man. So. It, like I said, it really sucks. He was just about to hit his mainstream strides. Like he was just breaking into the mainstream, and he is about to make some real, real money. Yeah, right. You know, and the thing is, I think he, he was more versatile than what we what we're hearing because what we're hearing is the Coke Boy sound. Yeah. So he just conformed to what who the people he signed to because he did not rap like that when he was with Stack. You know what I'm saying? But you could see the talent that he's able to play with different sounds and different you know what I'm saying flows so he definitely had talent man we lost another good one yeah man shout out to the uh, engineer at Patchwork at Patchwork Studios D Brown man he uh he worked with Chinks a little bit in his last days so I don't know 100% if he did some of these songs but I do know uh D he worked with uh Chinks like close to when he was about to be out of here and you know sorry to hear that but uh Hey, if y'all y'all need to record a patchwork, man, hit up D Brown or hit up Stafford, man. Do my homeboys, yo. Right, right. All right, we got a boogie with the hoodie. Artist out of Bronx, New York. Yeah, Shout artist. That's BX. actually his real name, Artist Dubois. He grew up in High Bridge, Bronx, New York. He uh, spent some time in Florida as well as New York in his late teens, but because he got in a lot of trouble. Uh, at, when he was younger he would listen to 50 Cent and Kanye West growing up he started writing raps when he was 12 but he didn't share them with anybody until he got into high school cause he was uh, pretty shy about his music you know like Eric Badu says in Tyrone I'm right. a musician and I'm sensitive about my shit <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know at the high, in high school he started writing bars and he started recording his first songs uh his first song was called Temporary and uh you know he started stress from a, a girl that claim that she was pregnant by him is kind of what fueled a lot of this music that's on this uh, EP on this mixtape. Uh, Artist was his first mixtape, actually. This is really his first project. 
and uh it's just now releasing on streaming um platforms it was actually out earlier this year on the mixtape form how do you feel about artists um it don't it, sound too good right now, bro. <laughs> that that it's, pause it's, you it's, took. It, it's not bad. <laughs> it's it's not bad, but it's nothing special. So I, I'm gonna say it's it's not for me. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> I I just wanted to do that because we agree. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. So he sounds somewhat like Days Loaf to me. You you, you hear that? Can you kind of hear that in his, in his music? He sounds like Dage Low for a little like, bit. Like, what, what exactly about Dage are you talking about? The, the flow. Like, and his voice ain't that... It's not that strong either. Okay, so. no, not, no. It just hit me. I heard it. It was a liquor. It hit me late. But I, <laughs> I get it. I know what you're talking about. Go so, ahead. it's like... Uh, it didn't really attract me. It does, it's, it, it's not Bronx. And, you know, it's not New York. Um, I don't hear no bars. It's kind of confusing because it's content, but your brother's gonna kill you on this review, right? Because he was talking about it. Just check out a boogie with the hoodie. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna hit. This one might be a miss, Roman, because um, it, it has content, but it's, it's confusing. It's like it's trap rap soul, <laughs> <laughs> trap rap soul, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, I gave this a C, a seventy-five um, average. I mean, it's nothing, nothing, nothing stood out. He should have had Fab on the shit that he had Fab on. He just well, put Fab it took my shit and made it into his own joint. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up, Fab. Should have just worked with the boy. You done? Yeah. All right, look, yo. <laughs> there's a lot of buzz around this kid, man. Like, I was looking online, and there's a lot of buzz around A Boogie with the hoodie, and I don't think it's well-deserved. You know, I think this is a solid project for somebody that this is their first project. Right. But his bars and setups are very pedestrian. Like, <laughs> my shit is better than that. <laughs> and I don't even rap. You know, and uh, I like some of the B City chooses. They're pretty good. I love the passion in his voice. I can You can hear the passion when he's rapping. You know, um, I'm glad he's got a lot of time to grow, though, because he's very young. So... I think, you know, he's he can only get better. It's obvious that the girl that, you know, he thought was pregnant by hurt him because it seemed to me like he was pretty damn confused on his mixtape. <laughs> like, which one is it, man? You hate the girls or you love them? Right. You don't right. trust girls at all or you trust them? Yo, I was, it's the same thing. I was noticing it's like there's feelings and emotions, but it's like, it's like he's, he's, he's smoothly telling you fuck you i'd rather be around my niggas like what <laughs> paul's that yo hold on let me take the mic out i gotta take the mic back out of that <laughs> yo dude and I, I know i was gonna get into it we, we about to do mac miller next anyway but yo like women are women they're beautiful like right why would you want to hang with some dudes right what the All hell the is time. wrong with you like y y the song when you said i had the ni knife in my back when i wrote this like you was talking about how some dudes turned on you <laughs> but you want to hang with dudes women are more loyal right i i, I like to say that you would say your the your lady is more loyal than most oh, yeah. of the dudes you know right oh yeah i mean my, of course i would have to say my lady you know what i'm saying with 10 years strong she been holding it down because it seems like your your lady kind of conforms to how you feel somewhat somewhat i'm not, I'm she, not saying she that understands she she understand even when she don't agree yeah that, yeah. That's what they, that's what our ladies there to do. That's what, what, that's but, what but people women, that's for you supposed to do. But even if they don't agree with you, if you actually to do like a lot of Google searches and stuff like that, when it comes to multitasking, men can't really multitask. Women can, because women are built to multitask. They have babies. They have to be able to nurture right. the baby and stuff like that, and still cook and do all this other stuff that you right. know women are like the most beautiful thing on the face of this planet right so for and and like i said hey boogie's pretty young so i can't knock him for knocking women because when i was like i mean look 18, at the era 19, he's coming up. i might have felt that way but look at the era he's coming up so not only the fact that he's young also the the time he's coming up is where nobody nobody's real nobody's really 
you know. Yo, if you rather hang with your dudes than your lady, man, you got a real problem. Like, that, uh, like I made a post the other day. Like, everybody's like, oh, man, 2K is about to come out. She better not hit my phone or she better leave me alone. Like, that's just Bruh, all, that's that, all jokes. That, right. It better be, like, and everybody just loving to repost and post stuff just for likes, I guess, and comments and shit. Bruh, I don't care about no game, man. Like, I'll play the game when the time comes for it. You know what I'm saying? But... I'd rather be my, with my lady over a game any day. Hey, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, th- I, I also wanted to point out, I feel like the cover of the project actually explains a lot of the songs because if you look at it, it's a girl. She's she's wearing a ski mask, but she's got like some puppeting strings and she's like controlling them. Right. And I feel like that, can, that actually explains a lot of the songs on here. Um, at times, I'm not even gonna lie, yo. This joint was very hard to listen to. It just sounded like a nigga whining. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? We could take that from days because it's a female. Yeah. And another thing, man. If I hear one more reference about Ball Main, oh, oh my Jesus Christ! Thank oh you. I didn't write God. it in my notes, but thank you for bringing it up. This is how you know that sign shit is real because we full sadges and we be catching a lot of the same shit, Bruh I meant to write that in my notes. What is what is it? Is either they giving it away, or it is it's not that expensive? What what's going on? I don't feel like he's getting a check from them yet. But duh, why are you fucking? Why are you promoting this clothing line for nothing? You better be getting a check for as many times as you talked about Balmain on this right. joint. All right. That and thing I, expensive, bro. It's not like anybody buying. It's not things. even that dope. Yeah, it's a lot of simple. I'd rather simple wear shit. a white tee and some regular jeans, man. Of uh, standouts, I only got three because there's only three good joints on the whole joint. Uh, I know what's real. Still thinking about you and my shit. Everything else, I had a hard time listening to. But at the same time, I ain't crap on it like that, y'all. I gave it a 75. I feel like this joint is average. It's not the worst thing I've heard. It's, it's better. It's a step up from from your little yachties and stuff like that, but it's not the best thing you're gonna listen to. He's young. He's got a lot of time to grow. I, I don't know who he's moving around the town with or whatever, but people are, uh, you know, you know, he he doing his thing, you know, network with each other out there, you know, French or Fred the Godson or Fat Joe or you know, get some, get some heavy hitters, get some. Some real con- some real New York content. You know what I'm saying? Well, we can't knock them too much. This is first mixed. Yeah. Like, this is yeah. first real project. Yeah. That, that's so, kind of what I, what so I said. So when the next joint to drop, we can really get in. Agree. Agree. So we're expecting some shit next time around. Yes, sir. <laughs> All so, right. Mac Miller, the Divine Feminine. Malcolm James McCormick. He was born in um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he was uh, going into he got into hip hop at 14, uh, but he really started taking it serious around 15. His biggest influences were the who's who of hip hop: Big L, Lauryn Hill, the BC Boys, Outkast, the Tribe Called Quest, Quest, among others. He started playing sports, and uh, but at the time he started treating hip hop like a job because he was like, "Yo, you know what? Screw the sports. If I could get into rap, he taught himself how to play piano, guitar, drums, and a bass guitar." Uh, he also started out as Easy Mac. That was his name. Easy Mac. <laughs> and uh, his first project came out at 15. He spent some time in the group as well. And uh, he released two more mixtapes before he signed to Rostrum Records. The Divine Feminine is Mac Miller's fourth studio album. How you feel about the Divine Feminine? It was definitely dope, but it was definitely different for him. from him. I'm used to hearing like you know a lot of hard and up up-temp- up tempo music from Mac. You know what I'm saying, um, like um, I never heard a whole project from him, but he did a lot of shows with Wiz, and I checked out a couple Wiz concerts because I think him and Wiz was managed by the same person. Um, so th- this was definitely different. The production was cool. Uh, it's concept music, so you you actually have to listen, not just hear. Don't ever play yourself. Right, right. So he he definitely went a di- different direction where he didn't just allow the beats to 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 make the the project. He actually, right. you know, what I'm saying he actually tried to put some creativeness uh, into it. Um, standouts. I like Dang. I like Cinderella. I like Soulmate. Um, 
I gave it an 82. I think this is a C plus. I thought it was solid for it not to be Mac Miller him it, what he usually does. He took a chance, but it was still solid. I gave it an 82. Cool. What you thought? Fresh off of getting crossed over by the bone collector at that celebrity basketball <laughs> game. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I forgot all about that, man. Yo, if y'all ain't see it, Google Mac Miller getting crossed up. Yeah. I it was about it was that. pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> but fresh off getting crossed up, man, this is actually something that helped him redeem himself. Right. You know, uh, you know, Miller said this album isn't about love, but it's about everything that he's learned from women in life. But I actually think it's more of a little bit of both. You know, like I said before, women are pretty much the most beautiful thing on this planet. Right. And, uh, you know, this album starts off so soulful, man. Right. Right. With the with the Bilal. Yo, yo, the Bilal. And then Anderson, Anderson Pack. Pack. Man, shout out to the Anderson yo, Pack on the, on the feature. That joint, yo, this album, yo, I'm telling you, Mac Miller, he isn't the best lyrical rapper, you know, but he isn't the worst either. And, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Jameson right. on skin. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my man. We gotta get to Jameson too, man. Yeah. Shout out to Jameson. You hit Jameson up on Instagram or, or Twitter, he is going to respond to you. He's that real. It don't matter who you are. Shout out uh, to him. Yeah, but uh like I said, Mac Miller, he isn't the greatest lyrical rapper, he isn't the worst. But you know, but when you listen to this album, the way this album makes you feel and the 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 way you can tell that this album was really well thought out. It makes up for what he may lack in lyrical ability. You know, the guest appearances on his album, they include Bilal, Anderson Pack, Todd Dollar Sign. I have a hard time saying this girl's name. It's his artist. I know he knows everybody has a hard time saying her name. In Jomaza. I don't know how to say her name, yo. But it's his artist. It's a female. She can sing. CeeLo's also on the album and Kendrick Lamar, K Dot, and right. uh, his current girlfriend, Ariana Grande. Right. Uh, I like this album a lot, yo, and it, it has some good vibes, good album, good features, standouts to me with Dang with Anderson Pack, yo, that joint goes hard. I put it on like the playlist a couple weeks ago, but it's gonna be on the playlist again because right. the joint is just that dope. Uh, my favorite part, it's one of my joints too. Uh, God is fair and sexy nasty with Kendrick Lamar. That joint is crazy. I gave this album a B, a eighty nine. I think it's fire. Right, right. Yeah, man. Yeah. And uh, I'd recommend anybody that's like really into hip hop music check this joint out, man. It yeah. was I was pretty surprised. Yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna say my grade probably took a hit. Well, his grade took a hit because I was listening to a boogie before I got to this, so it was like. But this was better than a oh, boogie. Oh, definitely it was. Definitely it was. But you I'm see, I'm listening to somebody that's talking about how much they hate females and slightly love them. Right. And then I come to this album that's pretty much a dedication to women. Right. No. But this is what I'm saying. Like this ain't Mac. This ain't the Mac Miller. I, I, I even heard anything from before. You get what I'm saying? So I didn't hear no rap really. Like he kind of. It was a little softer. So when I just came from listening to a boogie that i'm like man like what the hell this guy is whining the whole the whole shit so then I, when i listened to uh mac i i appreciated it but i guess it's not original mac miller so i was expecting something else i was expecting a hard beat or or some hard sounds but it was it was a smooth album and um and that's probably what hurt the grade but that doesn't mean I'm correct on the grade. You know what I'm saying? It's just how I felt at the time when I was listening to it. I may go back and listen to it and change my grade. What's I that? mean, you, you ain't really far off from what everybody else is saying. Okay. I, I'm Technically, I'm giving a higher grade. I, I actually like this album from Mac. Like, I, I really didn't expect this from him. Like, the way this joint sounds, like, it's so soulful. I didn't expect this from him. And, and another thing I want to point out, um, a lot of these white rappers take hip-hop way more serious than these black rappers. I was, I was, about, I was about to say, I kind of see why you gave it the grade you gave it. Cause you, you can you, tell from effort. listening to this, he put a lot of effort into right. it. 
He listened to a lot of stuff. He referenced a lot of stuff. Yo, why is it? And and, and it kind of goes back to like Little Yachty talking about he can't name five Tupac or Biggie songs. Why do you think it's okay to get involved? Don't get me wrong. I know you're doing mumble rap, but it still has rap its name at the end. Why don't you study the art form you're listening to? Right. When you get I mean, ready to working. get into a job, right. when you go into a job, you got to kind of know the history of the job. Right. Like when you're doing it as a career. And these guys, like you look at rock rock music and you listen to all of them guys. They always tell you that, uh, damn, um, I can't remember Homeboy's name, man. But uh, Columbus Short played him in that Cadillac Records movie. Uh, man, I can't remember his name. But it's like a lot of artists reference these old school blues artists as their inspiration for doing rock music. And then when it comes to hip hop and they, people, they ask people, hey, what was your inspiration? Oh, I don't like none of them dudes, just man. Screw money. all these old dudes. I'm just here to get money and have fun. <laughs> man, fuck you, nigga. Like, get the fuck out of here with your mumble bullshit, man. That goes back to the ignorance, Die. man. That goes back to the ignorance, man. It goes back to the whole... I'm going to say systematic. I don't care, man. I can find a way to tie it You know right what it is, in. man? Some folks have a strange idea entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it goes back. It goes back to thinking. I could tie that whole shit back to the whole systematic shit. I'm pretty sure you could. <laughs> so, all right, uh, Usher, hard to, to Usher? love. You know, on a trail to create this album, Usher released some music um, as a time exclusive on title. The album was initially called "You Are" by Usher. He released three singles: "Good Kisser," "She Can Give It to You," and uh, "I Don't Mind." Before uh, going on tour on the UR Experience tour, early in 2016, the title changed to Flawed and then later it ended up changing to Art Hard to Love. This is actually Usher's eighth studio album. How do you feel about Hard to Love, man? Man, I thought it was fire. I gave it a B. Plus. Um, right. Right, right. It, it, it shows that even with age, um, not that he's dumb old but you know even up there in age he could still uh stay relevant with what's going on now um with features from young thug on songs like uh no limit it shows that um also rivals with future uh production from uh metro booming and, and such um shows you that um there's um you know it, it lived up to usher um it was sexual i enjoyed the production again like i said i enjoyed the concept of the songs um standouts was uh songs like crash make you believer downtime where he uh he showed a little more vocal range um but in in total i enjoyed the whole i enjoyed the whole project it was a up tempo slow tempo a mix of everything um shout out to the spanish collab with ruben blaze at the end of the album Word, that, that's how I felt. Uh, B plus 91. Yo. <laughs> I fuck with Usher, yo. Yo, to me, though, this album was like a roller coaster, man. It was like it was going so uphill at the beginning. Right. And then it dropped out in the middle, and then it went back up at the top, at the end. <laughs> uh, Needed You, the way the joint sounded out, it's a, it's a dope song, man. Shout out to B.B. Borelli. We're trying to put y'all on stuff before... It blows up, but BB Borelli, she writing songs for Usher now. Right. Uh, I really need a drums on that. No, man, I needed drums on that song. That joint is dope, but if they put drums on it, it would have been over the edge. Missing you, the change up on that joint is crazy. Yeah, I thought that was so dope. The transition, the transition yeah. back up and down, up and down. Yo, it, it's it's like three different songs. Right. Uh, uh, no limit with Young Thug, dope ass song. Uh, but from four. From song four to ten, me personally, it's hit or miss to me. You know, from and that's from Bump to Fuck With Me, FWM. Uh Bump, it was written by the Dream, but it sounds like a song that should work, but to me it didn't work. Uh Let Me, as that's actually written by Party Next Door. It's I, I can't really get with it. Downtown is cool. Uh make you believe they have parts of other song that I I like, but as a whole, I couldn't get with it. Crash is cool. I don't know if that's because uh, hearing it on the radio or not. Mm -hmm. 
you know that's what i was wondering i'm like do i am i okay with crash because i've heard it a million times already uh but after that the rest of the album is crazy uh tell me is my favorite song on the joint man How you, nigga. how you feel about the future uh, feature? I'm just going to ask you, how do you think I feel about the future Yeah, feature? I mean, that's why I asked. <laughs> nah, like, to be honest with you, I think that future feature is the second best song on the album. Right. You smart. That joint is actually crazy. That's, Rivals, that shit is dope. That's the future that I think you like. That future on Rivals is that nigga like the future that did um uh, honest with kanye yeah 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 because he he can do that he has that talent yeah he, just he, he needs to do to more go r&b up. stuff it kind of sounds stupid when he tries to fuse into the hip-hop stuff but uh rivals is dope tell me it's dope hard to love is dope stronger champion the rest of that joint is crazy crazy uh usher sounds better than he has in a long time in my opinion because the last couple albums uh, had a lot of pop songs and a lot of dance songs, EDM. I wasn't into that. But this seems like Usher getting back to Usher. The only EDM sounding song is kind of Crash. Right. And uh, But it's, it's kind of weird because I like half of the album and I kind of hate half of the album. But <laughs> I think half of the album is so strong, I gave it a 85. I think the album is dope, man. Okay. I don't know if it was the fact that I just heard somebody with experience that's supposed to be like not washed but a little older out of time kind of still able to do his thing and you know what I'm saying and it killed the album to me you know what I'm saying so but how you feel about bump though I'm just curious the joint with the dream the dream rope see maybe maybe for the dream it would have worked I see what you're saying. Maybe because it, it was the way it's written and produced. It sounds like it should be a hit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like I feel like if this would have came out like five, six years ago, it would have been a smash. Right. But right maybe, now maybe it's it don't really work. Maybe it's outdated. If you took, like I said, I, I have a I have a problem from four to ten. If you replace four for four to ten. And put Good Kisser, I Don't Mind, and a joint with Nicki Minaj in there. This album is crazy. Okay, I but, see what you're saying. But as it stands, he did, the songs that he did with Eric Bellinger, Jermaine Dupri, and Jonta Austin, and Brian Michael Cox, they didn't make the album. Right. Good Kisser, all of them, they didn't make the album. And I feel like the album suffered. I do like Usher. You know, it, it just sounds like he was trying to stay current and it works but like okay downtime that sounds like a little drakeish to me right i i don't know what it is but I, it, it might be the production but but real talk rivals and tell me and missing you thumb three joints man yeah, i i Yeah, I, I from from jump because missing you is the second track, so I knew that that was gonna be probably one of the craziest songs on the on the whole project. And you know this, man. Yeah, the switch up was stupid on that one. Yeah, and shout out to Young Thug on that No Limit joint. Y'all know I don't give Young Thug too much credit, right? <laughs> but Young Thug and Future on this album, they they did their thing, man. They recently posted some where they're in the studio together too. So yeah, and, and be ready for Future. Migos, 21 Savage, all of them, man. There's a future coming real soon, man. Coming. Y'all heard it first here. It's coming. That yeah, wave coming. is coming. All right, y'all. That has been episode 32 of the report card. Yep. Check out with us. Check in with us next week. Hey, man. Y'all don't understand how hard it is to write what I have written on my computer after you didn't had like four drinks of that goose. But anyway. <laughs> Check with us next week, man. We got four albums for y'all. We got that boy Todd Dollar Sign. Right, right. We got uh, Campaign. We got Nick Grant, 88. 
All right. We got my man Token Eraser sa- Shavings. Eraser Shavings, excuse eraser me. Shavings. And then we got that we got the diplomats, diplomatic community. Right, right. I can so review I that right say. now, but we're gonna wait till next <laughs> week. <laughs> right. Yeah, man, make sure y'all hit us up on Facebook, on Tumblr, on all the places, man. Look, just go to Google, search <laughs> the report card podcast. Right. Go to Twitter, put at the uh, TRC Podcast live go to instagram put at trc podcast right you know what i'm saying follow us go to the youtube uh, go to google music play go to itunes go to iheart radio and comment right comment tell, tell like, us how much you hate our podcast yeah, critique tell, on us, it. tell us how much you love our podcast right. it don't matter to me just let us know something right you know what i'm saying comment like subscribe and uh, we on um, also we on Stitcher, we on Libsyn, we on Aha Radio. I said that we in tune in. We everywhere except for Spotify because they acting like some bitches. <laughs> we everywhere, literally, man. I've been pulling over at, at random um, uh, parking lots and just putting our cards on people's uh, windows. Yeah, car windows, yeah, man. So. <laughs> you you don't. Hey, hey, if you live in the A. Hey. <laughs> yeah, word, man. You might just see one of these cards on your window, shit, uh, on your window or something. And you know this, word. man. Yeah, but seriously, man. Uh, we love y'all guys. Right. We appreciate all the love, man. Right. Especially y'all dudes in the United States. Y'all dudes in China, right? Overseas Philippines, and all that. Spain. Like, yo, some people in Africa, nigga. Like, yo. <laughs> I didn't mean to push that again, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but not nah, seriously. We appreciate all the love. We appreciate y'all listening, man. Right, right. And uh, yo, we gonna sure keep doing this shit. Right. Man. Make sure y'all subscribe, tell a friend, and tell a friend. Make sure y'all send in y'all uh, comments, send in y'all requests. If y'all feel there's an uh, uh, artist or an album that's being under appreciated, overlooked, or it's overrated, or you just need to hear us break it down or speak on it. Uh, you know, feel free to send in those emails um, or requests or whatever you want to call them. Also, check out the clothing at So Loyal at So Loyal Clothing Inc on Instagram. Check out the car customizing at So Loyal underscore Customs. Yeah, that's, man. And that's really about it. Nah, nah, that's not it, man. Turn the music off, man. Oh, yeah, oh, it's you, football you know how time. it goes. Yeah, yeah, man. Fan- fantasy football, man. <laughs> hey, I'm playing Mingo this oh, week. Oh yeah, I just remembered. Yeah. Shout out to Mingo. Shout out to DeAndre Hopkins. I I know the pay, I know your quarterback sucks. Man. <laughs> uh you, you should have put up more points. Mingo was even cheering for you. He yeah. didn't know you was playing. Yeah, I forgot week. I was playing against him. I'm here cheering for him to make to get the ball and all that. <laughs> I'm like get, Shit. That's how you was feeling? Yeah, I'm like, good shit. It, a good thing it didn't happen, because the ball get to him, he catching that thing. That boy nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the man. Hey. I need the rest of my team to step up. I gotta beat Mingo this week. I gotta beat three and zero. Yeah, it's it's looking it's looking it's looking like it, it might be a little tight one though, because um you had two players already played, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You you had two players play too. Don't yep. hey, don't front. No, nah, I know that's what I said. It's gonna be tight. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna man. be tight. Yeah, don't 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 front, man. You had two players play. I had two players play. And it was last minute. I put Fuller in the game too. Yeah, last minute. Hey, the rest of my team, man. Help me. <laughs> Seriously, man, I need y'all help. I gotta beat Mingo. This is the money league. Uh-huh. I need to win that straight cash money. I'm one and one in this league. I think I'm one and one in another league, and I'm two and zero oh in another league. So I'm undefeated. Fuck Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was non-related because I don't even have that dude on my team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we playing the giant. The Giants playing uh, the, the Redskins. That's why that was said. Right. Uh, shout out to Odell Beckham. Oh man, that's gonna be a battle. Victor it's Cruz, tomorrow, Sterling yeah. Shepard. That's gonna be a battle, Norman and um, Odell tomorrow. The Giants should win that. They should win that. I'm right. not guaranteeing anything. They should win that. The defense has been playing. Lights out. That's what I like to see. Shout out to Janoris Jenkins. Like, I don't even know none of these niggas. But if y'all do listen, <laughs> shout out to you, my brother. Hey, balling, huh? Yeah, sure. Janoris Jenkins. Y'all actually doing uh, 
opposite to giant stuff. Yeah, DRC. Yeah, 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 taking care of the football. Yeah, clock management. Uh, uh, hey, 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 back up, man. Back up. Hey, I, when, I'm just and, saying. Man. <laughs> when it comes to taking care of the football versus the Saints, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Learn something from this. <laughs> Them dudes fumbled the ball like five times. I was sitting there watching the game. Like, look, if y'all win. <laughs> um yeah clock management been a lot better yeah man shout out to uh carson wentz man that kid doing his thing you smart kid doing his thing man hey, hey carson wentz uh shout out to 1080p my wife i i only going for carson wentz because she got uh she got jordan matthews on her team so okay shout out to jordan matthews and him that, that's about it. Other than that, it'd really be fuck Carson Wentz. Right, but, right. Know. We uh, my Eagles got Pittsburgh tomorrow. Who you who you think taking that? Eagles versus Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, a lot of people feel like that. I feel like this is a test to see where my defense is at. This shit right here, nigga. <laughs> Pittsburgh is no joke, though, man. Pittsburgh is no joke. They air that thing out. But the thing is, is like I said, man. Like we we was talking about earlier this week, right? If Ben can't overthrow it to somebody. Right, he because he always overthrowing them passes to Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown just fast enough. Martavius Bryant just fast enough. You know them dudes. The 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 Steelers receivers just fast enough to get there. I mean, I like Big Ben and I like uh, Antonio Brown. I like Pittsburgh. Um, it was always kind of a split thing because Deuce Staley played for the Eagles and then he went and played for Pittsburgh. Um, I respected um, and liked Cordell Stewart. Right, Jerome Bettis. And um, Plaxico originated from um, Pittsburgh. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a little connection there. So I show love. And my lady's a Pittsburgh fan. So, you know, I show them a little love here and there. So um, I do fuck with Big Ben and Antonio Brown. But I think DeAndre Hopkins, it's a better re- it's the better receiver because he does it with any quarterback. You smart. This is why I also praise Brandon Marshall so much because doesn't matter what coordinator, doesn't matter what quarterback, every year Brandon Marshall puts up support, um, stats. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> nah, don't do that, man. Brandon Marshall damn near died last week. <laughs> yeah, he did almost die, but check out his stats. He still did good. Last week? Yeah. Dumb. Oh, no, not last week. The week before that, my fault. That's right. Right. Who they played this week that they just passed? I don't know. I just know the Giants played the Redskins. That's all I know. Um, but, yeah, man, Brandon Marshall usually kills, man. So, uh, unless he's hurt. I know he, a game uh, the week before that, he uh, got tackled awkwardly and, and was hot, limping. But, um, shit, that's Julio Jones every play. And shout out to everybody in the fantasy leagues that drafted uh, Todd Gurley first because he ain't performing, and then shout out to everybody that drafted Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson second, I, I who's took a out blow. for like six weeks. Yeah, I took a blow. I forgot what pick I had, um, in that draft with my my cousin and them. But um, I got AP and it hurt. He down, but I hopefully get a bounce back from Charles. He should be playing this week. Jamal Charles? Yep. I, I don't think so. No. Damn. Another he, week. He might. He might play, but I don't think so. Damn. But Another if he week. does play, I'm starting Alex Smith. <laughs> <laughs> right. We close it in on an hour, man. We got to close this joint yeah, out. Yeah, man. Yeah, make sure you check out. Make sure you tell a friend and tell a friend and subscribe. Send in emails, requests, critique. Oh, yeah. I ain't even All tell right. y'all the email. At trcpodcast.com. Hold on now. At trcpodcastlive.com. Right. At trcpodcastlive.com. Right. They try to remember this stuff after you done had some goose because I'm about to go get some more. <laughs> well, it's over, man. We close out. Yeah, See I ain't trying to be week. like Nori on, jam- on Drink Champs. Hey, if y'all don't listen to Drink Champs, check it out, man. Yeah, it's yeah, a pretty I'm, dope yeah, podcast. Yeah, y'all missing out. Check us out and oh, yo, check them out. Yo, 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 yo. I, I'm not really for all that advertising other joints, but there's another podcast I've been listening to. It's called trappers anonymous it's pretty dope like homeboy interview people in different uh you know shout out to joe button podcast because rory on joe button's podcast put me on to it but it's like uh homeboy talked to like a stripper and not she wasn't a stripper but 
basically she was kind of like slightly prostituting and then he talks to a trapper and then on the like and they talk about like the underworld and stuff like right, that but right. their voices is uh is the distorted scholars, and stuff yeah. like that and uh and it's pretty it's a pretty dope podcast man you get to see where the mind of these people are and it's uh trappers anonymous yeah and, I mean, uh, that's, it's pretty dope opens up your thinking yeah, man, and and if y'all wonder what I listen to, like I listen to music Shit. all week. I, but aside I like to from think that, like a criminal, <laughs> even though I'm not a criminal, I no, like to no, think like but, a criminal. But it lets you, it's how, a yeah. good mentality to 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 get into. It's good to get inside of people's minds right. to do other stuff. Right, right. You know, and uh, Trappers Anonymous is a good podcast. Uh, the Drink Champs is a good podcast because uh, if you listen to the joint with Dame Dash, a lot of y'all some Dame Dash haters, but yo, check out the joint with Dame Dash. Dame right. Dash is a fucking genius, yo. Yeah, I fuck with them. That was crazy. I hit I it with my them. mic stand. That was an accident. <laughs> and that's uh, what I was saying. A lot of for. people, uh, I'm hearing a lot of people in the city were saying that Dame was going crazy. Dame ain't going crazy, man. But I ain't trying to get this joint too right. much in the 60 minutes. So, <laughs> Peace. Peace.